AMD introduced their Ryzen 5000 series APUs in April of 2021, based on their Zen 3 CPUs, to effectively replace their aging Ryzen 3000 series Zen Plus parts. This is quite a generational leap and their APUs were well overdue for an upgrade. But is it worth purchasing one in 2022 when there's so many options out there? Let's find out. Hey everyone, I'm Danny, welcome to the channel. I wanna introduce you to AMD's newest APU lineup, which is essentially just a processor that has built-in graphics on the CPU, so you can play games with it. The two options you have to choose from are the Ryzen 5 5600G and the Ryzen 7 5700G. Let me show you the specs for these CPUs as well as some other options in this price range. These two CPUs are pretty much the same CPU minus the core counts and the boost clocks. So the 5700G is an 8-core 16-thread part, while the 5600G is only a 6-core 12-thread part. The base clock of the 5700G is 3.8 gigahertz, while the 5600G's is 3.9. And the boost clock of the 5700G is 4.6 versus the 4.4 gigahertz on the 5600G. They're both 65 watt parts and they have 16 megabytes of L3 cache and they both run on PCI 3.0. Where they differ is the price categories. The 5600G comes in at $178.98, while the 5700G is $275. So about $100 more for two more cores and four more threads. Is it worth it? We're gonna find out in a second. But also take a look at the other CPUs in this price range. The 5600 non-X and the 5600X are both six core 12 thread parts. They boost to 4.4 and 4.6 respectively. And they've got 32 megabytes of L3 cache versus the 16 on the 5600G and 5700G. They're also PCIe 4.0 parts, not 3.0 that these CPUs are. They come in at $179.99 and $217.99. The only CPU I have in the studio to compare these two with is the 5600X, which I have in my test system here. I wanted to have a CPU to compare benchmarks against these APUs, Let's talk about those right now because it's always helpful. The benchmark system is something I threw together in the Fractal Design Meshify 2 compact case. I've turned it into an open air test bench and I'll leave the parts list below of everything that's in it. The gaming benchmarks were run at 1080p on max settings using no DLSS or ray tracing. The results are from the average of three runs. Lastly, I performed all these tests using a dedicated GPU, not the built-in graphics. If you want that type of video, it's right up here. The first game I tested was Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I played the multiplayer game mode. I was very surprised to see the 5600G beat out the 5700G on both average FPS and 1% lows. It achieved 155 FPS average versus the 5700G's 146.2 and 104.8 versus the 94.1 on the 1% lows. This trend continued into the next game, Apex Legends where the 5600G ran 160.1 average FPS over the 5700G's 147 and 119.3 versus the 93.3 for the 1% lows. I have the 5600X in here just for standard comparison so you can see what kind of performance a non-APU processor will get. Things change for the next two games because we're more GPU bound than CPU at this point. In Forza Horizon 5, we saw the 5700G hit 84.9 FPS average while the 5600G achieved 84.2, which is basically the same. The 1% low for the 5700G was 68.1 versus the 63.8 on the 5600G. Even the 5600X didn't do much better in this game. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we saw 130.5 average FPS with the 5700G, but only 127.3 on the 5600G. Once again, an unnoticeable difference. The 5600X showed up with about a 10% increase over both APUs. Something else to keep in mind is productivity performance. You might wanna use your PC for something other than just gaming. So I ran up two different tests for this exact use case. Cinebench R23 was the first test ran, where the 5600G saw 10,337 points with a max CPU temperature of 73 Celsius. I thought the temperature was important to point out since this is the hottest temps the processor saw while running CPU stress tests. Now the 5700G achieved 13,425 points, but that's expected due to its two extra cores and four extra threads. 
it also saw the same 74C max temperature. The 5600X got almost the same score as the 5600G, but at a much more acceptable 64 Celsius max temp. I kind of chalk that up to the fact that there is a GPU built onto the die with the CPU. Even though it's not really utilizing it, all of that stuff compacted onto the CPU versus the 5600X not having that, that's the only thing I can think of that might make the difference in temperature testing. The Blender benchmark is a little more complicated in its results. It runs three tests, which are the Monster Scene, Junk Shop, and Classroom. The 5600G had the worst results as expected. The 5700G really walks away with this test since it has all those extra cores and threads. It got a 98 in the monster test versus the 5600G and the 5600X, which got around the 70s. It got 59.6 versus the low to mid 40s on the 5600X and 5600G in the junk shop, and 45.6 versus the 5600s where they were in the mid to low 30s on the classroom rendering. The 5700G really walks away with the productivity benchmarks versus the other two CPUs, mainly because of its extra core counts. Now remember, the G series processors are only PCIe 3.0. So if you're thinking about using these CPUs for productivity stuff, the PCI 4.0 lanes on a 5600, 5600X, or like a 5700X are going to net you faster transfer speeds if you use something like big solid state hard drives and you wanna be able to transfer files quickly. That's where you'll gain your benefit on a PCI 4.0 device. So who needs these APUs? The only use case scenario I can think of is if you have to have the integrated graphics that are built onto the CPU. I'd say the only scenario I see is when you can't use CPUs like the 5600, 5600X, or 5700X in the case of an eight core CPU. If you need the integrated graphics, then it'll obviously be worth it. If you have a case that's small like this in when I have here, then you won't be able to put a dedicated GPU into the case. So you'll have to run something like an APU. And if you want to get that better gaming performance, you know, to play some simple stuff like League of Legends or Fortnite on super low settings, you can pop this APU into a case this small and get to gaming. Or maybe you're waiting to buy a GPU and you haven't found something yet that's a decent price. You can use these APUs, pop them into a system today, and play simple games like League of Legends or Fortnite or something. But those are the only use case scenarios I can really think of. Otherwise, the 5600 non-X will give you the best performance for the best value in this price range. Oh, and if you're thinking about using Intel 12th gen without a GPU instead of these APUs, think again. The performance for Intel is not even close to on par with AMD's gaming performance in these APUs. Plus, you can use things like FSR to get yourself even better frame rates until you find that dedicated GPU to pop into your system. So just do yourself a favor and skip out on Intel when it comes to integrated graphics. But if you're into PC gaming and you want to catch more content centered around it, make sure you subscribe down below because I come out with new videos every single week. So thanks for stopping by. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Just what I do when I'm out, so. Try not to hold me down, feel alive